Welcome to episode two of Tendy Talk. Thank you so much for joining me. The daily live stream where you are always the starting goalie. So how how are how is everyone today? Today is awesome. It is Tuesday, and I'm super psyched to be here with you because um, I'm doing this stream a little earlier today, right? I'm trying to I'm trying to play around and figure out what is the best time to do my live streams uh, every day to get the most amount of people in here. And I know that it can be difficult sometimes if you have work or school. Um, Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. I just had something going on uh, <laughs> that I uh, that drew my attention away from you, which is which is this is what the show is all about, right? Answering your questions and helping you figure out what uh, what what challenges you might be facing as a goalie. Take some time out of our day to to talk about the sport we love and the position that we love. And in fact, you can be a part of the show in two different ways. Let's take a look at this. The first way is you can use hashtag TT along with your question in the chat. That helps me identify it really quickly and be able to pull out your questions because we have a, you know, a finite amount of time to hang out today. Um, or two, if you can't join me live on the live stream and you're watching this on the replay, but you still want to be a part of the show, you can head on over to Instagram, follow me over there, send me a DM and send me a voice message and I will play that voice message and answer your question on a future episode. So those are the those are the two best ways to to get your questions in front of my eyes. So let's take a quick look. Oh my gosh, you guys are so awesome. There are, this chat is already full of a whole bunch of people and it's awesome to see you all conversing with each other and hanging out. That's my that's my vision for this this live stream, right? To to create a place where we can just gather on a daily basis, um, hang out, do, you know, talk goalies, be cool to each other and, uh, and take some time out of our, you know, busy days, whether that be school or work or hanging out during the pandemic. Um, and yeah, just be, just be good to each other because I feel like I am cut off from the world sometimes when I'm working from home and this is my way of connecting with you. And so let's jump right into a couple questions. So right off the bat, uh, Blackhawks fan vids was here early and, and asked a question about breaking in a glove. They said that they've tried hot water, skate ovens, etc. Do you have ways? I think, um, for me, when I always when I break broken a glove, I would do the old school method of just using it, opening it and closing it every single time. And in fact, I wanted to do a video about how many times it takes opening and closing a glove to get it broken in the way that you like it. Um, could that be one thousand times? Could that be ten thousand opens and closes? I know that some gear manufacturers have automated machines where they insert a catching glove, and it does some predetermined amount of opening and closures to pre-break in a glove for you before they ship it out to you. Um, but on, not every manufacturer does that. I think it depends on the the brand of the glove that you have. And also sometimes it can depend on whether it is a senior size glove or an intermediate or junior size glove. Sometimes um, the way that junior and intermediate gloves are constructed is not optimal for closure because some manufacturers don't actually have the time and energy and resources to put in the R and D it takes to develop um, a good closure for their for their youth gear lines, and so it really depends on a whole bunch of different factors. There are some things if you've done the hot water method and um, if you've done a skate oven, it could be that your glove is laced too tightly around the perimeter or there could be something else in the in the lacing that is kind of binding it together um, I had a glove once where the T portion of my glove you know you have your catching glove and you have the T where the webbing is this T portion was too rigid and subsequently it was preventing the glove from actually closing because it was it was uh, providing a physical barrier so I think um, as I scroll through the chat real quick it looks like you just ordered a brand new glove and blocker. So hopefully that will alleviate your pain, your your current problem. But um, yeah, breaking in a glove is a personal link for everyone, right? I think there are different methods. And, and for me, I always liked having my hand in the glove so that I knew that it would break in according to my own biomechanics. 
of how I like to open and close my hand inside the glove. So hopefully that helps. Let's get through a couple more questions real quick. Um, oh my gosh, you guys are so awesome. It is, uh, I'm sorry if I talk really fast because I want to try to get to as many of these as I can and to and to help you out as, as much as I can. And there's one question here that stood out to me and that was from, um, let me see, let me see if I can find it in here in the chat. Oh man guys are just you guys are amazing i can't believe how i wasn't sure how it would feel to to do a live stream every day but i'll tell you what when i see all of your smiling faces out here in the chat it feels really awesome there was one question and i uh i don't know where it um who it was from but they asked about increasing reaction time and that's something i haven't really touched on a lot in my um in my videos, but from my perspective, there are a couple things that you can do, and that is get yourself a reaction ball. Those are those kind of balls with different textures on them, so that when you throw them against the wall, it bounces back to you in an unpredictable way. Um, those can really help, right? So if you could start off, you can start off easy with like a tennis ball or a handball or racquetball, something that has a predictable bounce, where you can where you can really throw it against the wall and predict where it's going to go. And a lot of Reaction time sometimes is mistaken for um, ability to read plays and to predict where things are going to go. So working on that kind of reading and reacting in conjunction with pure reaction can help you a lot of times. And then once you're there, you can graduate to different uh, hand-eye coordination activities like juggling is a really good one to help with working on your reaction time, but also your peripheral vision. And then moving on to things like a reaction ball. And these things are pretty they're pretty inexpensive these days. I think you can get a reaction ball for less than 10 bucks on Amazon. And so that could be a way to really help you with regards to reacting um, and getting yourself in a, in a better, in a more read and react mindset, which is always important in today's game. Um, a couple other questions. Oh, TGG, hashtag, use hashtag questions. I just got one double T, I just got a double T CCM glove. How is it different uh, using a double T than a single T? Should I get a floating T? And uh, you're also considering it. So when it comes to T's and catching gloves, I think it's really about personal preferences, right? And whether you like to feel the snap of catching a puck or whether you like to feel kind of that cradling of um, softening the impact in into your catching glove. So there are, there are I've used both in my career and I prefer a single T because I like feeling that the glove is the puck is in that glove right sometimes when you have a double t or if you have a floating t to to kind of soften the impact um pucks can go in and you don't actually know that they're in because you don't feel them because it's so it's such a soft catch so it really depends on personal preference i think once you use a couple gloves and get into um get into a little bit of a rhythm you'll figure out kind of what your personal preference is and, and how you like to how you like to catch a puck. One consideration is visibility, and that is with regards to when you are covering a puck on the ice. Some double tees, depending on the thickness of the spines, have better visibility, whether or not you are using skate lace in your pocket or you're using a uh, nylon cord in your pocket. So that's something to consider if you like to be able to see the puck in underneath your glove while you're covering under the ice, aside from um, how it feels. but with regards to function, I think that they are um, they are pretty much similar. I don't think that there are any major impacts, especially when you're talking about playing at the level that a lot of us play at where shots are not coming too hard or too fast. Um, and so that's just my thought on double T's, but really it's a personal preference. And I think either way you go, I think it's all good. Uh, let's get today, let's get right now to, uh, to, the, to this segment. I am super excited because all of you have been so supportive when it comes to wanting to be a part of the show. And that's what this is all about, right? So right now, let's get to this goalie gear of the day. And today's goalie gear of the day is my buddy, Eric. Eric is a longtime viewer and supporter of the channel. He sent me a message over on Instagram of his awesome matching warrior setup. And uh, so, Eric, props to you. You are the gear of the day. I think it's, I think it looks awesome. I don't even know what I'm doing here. I'm going back to here. I think it looks awesome. 
Uh, personally, I don't think there's enough red, but that's that's really just me, right? So uh, that's about all the time I have today. Thank you so much. I'm sorry if I didn't get to your question, but you know what? I will be right back here tomorrow. So make sure you turn on notifications so that you know when I go live. And if you miss this, don't worry, I'll upload it right afterwards. Um, and one last thing, goalies, remember, you are totally awesome. Have an awesome day. Have an awesome Tuesday. And I'll see you right back here tomorrow.